got it. Sorry. Um, what I probably should preface in saying is please don't push your phases. If you are mm. on pureed or you're on soft, don't rush it up there just to eat Christmas lunch because those phases are designed to really protect um, against the, or really to reduce the chance of a leak. So don't yeah. test bait um, by having that roast turkey or whatever. If you aren't really up to that stage yet, please try to hang in there just a little bit if you can. Um, I know it is a temptation, but it's still um, really important to, to keep to your dietitian's guidelines about how long you should stay on each phase. Mm. Um, I guess what I'm seeing is people get nervous um, and, and really unsure about how this is going to go. And again, it depends on what phase of the journey um, everyone's up to. But um, I, where I see it is perhaps for people's first Christmas, how do I cope? And I think probably the, the, the one key message that I like to give everyone is to join in. Uh, really, what we don't want to do is to trip you back into that all or nothing mentality, which is often what can happen at Christmas. Um, you're trying to be really good. You may have been over restricting, which is not necessarily what we want either. Christmas comes and there's a whole uh, array of yummy tasty foods and some of them might be foods that you haven't had for a little while um, start to indulge in those again and they get a serious case of the guilts mm. feel like that perhaps you've undone some good work and and feel a bit despondent and go well what's the case I'll just keep going um, and, and I think that's really the, the worst possible reaction that you can have I think if you if you arrive at Christmas with the thought that you're going to join in mm. Um, and you're going to allow yourself to have something because, you know, I always say after surgery, the last thing you want to do is keep dieting. Yeah. So it's a perfect time to, to test out that non-dieting mentality um, and, and really look at being able to, to join in and enjoy yourself. That's a great point with the dieting mentality. We might come back to that because I do want to have a look at that because we hear it come up quite a lot. We'll cover the Christmas part first and then we'll look at how do we get our heads out of that space as well. Um, it's great advice. It's I really, and we did a blog this week on navigating Christmas and that was kind of the first thing was that you're in the stage you're in. Um, if you're in the liquids and puree stage, you might be like, meh, there's no Christmas for me this year. But um, we also encourage you to look at it as the beginning of something, not the end. So it's looking at where you're at is, you know, some people do have their surgery over this time of year because they've got the time off to recover and actually, you know, really learn what they need to do in a time where everybody's in a relaxed state it might be the only time you get holidays in the year and people take that time to do the surgery and, um, and, you know, have that time off. Um, but yeah, do stick with your stage, but don't look at it as, you know, a punishment or a restriction. It's more like here I am at the very beginning and this is where it all starts and it will be a challenge because there's so much on offer, but it's also, it's, it is how it's going to be um, as far as the rest of your life goes. Um, you won't be on liquids and purees for the rest of your life, of course, but it is that whole, um, taking the focus off what are we going to eat and looking at who are we going to be with and, and particularly at a time like this where we've all been apart for so long I think it's a great opportunity for us to really just bathe in the people and the environment and you know the whole festivities of getting together and reconnecting so that's kind of where we positioned it was looking at um, how can you become like this you know, um, advocate for bringing people together and um, actually, you know, increasing your, uh, even your awareness of how you socialise and, and how you connect with people outside of, you know, sitting down and eating a meal. Um, so it's looking at other ways of doing that as well. Have you got suggestions in that regard, Sal? Yeah, and no, it is just exactly what you said, Jackie. It's realising that that a lot of these social occasions, be it Christmas or, or, or birthday or a, a catching up with friends, it actually is about the social connection. It does. It, it society tends to make these things all about the food, but yeah. I think if you can go back to the essence of the fact that it is connection, and and maybe there's some relatives or friends that you haven't seen much or been able to see in this year. So if you get back to that, the the essence of of connection, um, yeah. rather than making it all about food I think that tends to to, to to really bring you back to the basics uh, I guess the unfortunate thing there is that a lot of other people still do make it all about the food yes, um, yes. so with that in mind you know most um, 
people after bariatric surgery still have some form of restriction. Certainly, certainly in the first two, two years, we usually see there is good restriction. And then, yes, it does tend to reduce a little bit as time goes on. But there is that restrictive element that helps you um, because if you want to um, partake in something, it, it really is going to stop you overindulging. You just can't fit too much in. So. Mm. I guess that's something to bear in mind too. Don't be anxious, don't be frightened because um, you're not going to be able to eat a lot of it. And, and that's all the more reason for joining in because you don't worry. I mean, that's why you, that's the, that's the fabulous thing about bariatric surgery. You can still join in and then you get that lovely signal that you've had enough. Yeah. Um, and and that's, that is pretty well active in, 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 in most clients up until various stages but you, you know that two or three year mark so that, mm. that's the that's the tool working at its best so I think that's a it's a perfect time to to not be anxious about food but to be able to go well you know what I, I'm, I'm only going to be able to have a small amount so that's terrific yeah and it's still yeah you're still having that experience it's just a smaller portion really isn't it which we yeah, do exactly. if you are down the track you've done that all year with smaller portions for every other meal um yep. it's no different really um i was going to say um making it more fun as far as different stages that you're at we were making some suggestions like a lot of the time when I have clients who are trying to give up you know drinking during the week I'll say to them like it's almost like an association they come home they're cooking dinner they want to have a glass of wine um, and it, sometimes we look at what that means to them and it's like oh I get to put it in that beautiful glass and it looks good and it's you know all frosty and sparkly and it just works for me and so we look at you know maybe keeping the glass put your you know your drink whatever it is if you're in liquid stages you've got an array of drinks you're taking um you can just jazz it up and make it a bit more festive and maybe put it in a glass that floats your boat kind of thing um wrap some tinsel around your straw or whatever you know really makes you feel kind of that you are immersed in that festive season so there's little tricks that still um keep you feeling like you're um you know it's special time um but looking at also what those um, drinks comprise of. So early stage, um, I know it can be pretty um, limited as far as we're trying to get protein in, we're trying to meet all these other requirements. Do you have any special ideas on, you know, like a Christmas kind of style smoothie or something like that? I guess what, what the summer fruits are all in. So, yeah. um, and, and, and fruits are some people often scared about fruit because of sugar and everyone's worried about dumping syndrome. Mm. Um, so if dumping syndrome is generally more likely to happen with a bypass than a sleeve, we don't see lots of dumping with our sleeve, but it's very individual. Mm. So I guess it's just a matter of if you're someone prone to dumping, then you probably do have to be a little bit careful about putting too much mango or or too much banana in your smoothie. But if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of that, you could certainly use some of those lovely summer fruits and make it a bit tropical. You know, mm. mint is lovely in a smoothie as well. That's a that's a really lovely thing to think about. Yeah. The other thing is, as you've mentioned, Jackie, just making the drinks look attractive because it, it part of it is, is is the eye appeal. So you can put things like, um, you know, um, passion fruit in a drink you can crush up some berries and put them in and if you're drinking with a straw I know you might get a berry <laughs> stuck on the end of the straw but you're not going to be at risk of gulping a big piece down um, and frappes you know you can really use your imagination to frappe up something mm. um, it's really just about getting all the the summery sensation foods in and using colors you know like you know the bright oranges go well with, with some some pureed fruits and berries um, to make you feel that you are perhaps part of the part of the scenery as everyone yeah. else is that's a good point and I think that's also like what you're saying about eye appeal um, looking at how can you throughout your throughout your weight loss surgery journey it is about you know making food a process and making it kind of a ritual rather than you know looking at volume of food or um, what it is it's more about nutritious food and kind of dressing it up to make it look nice so getting to practice that kind of ritual around a meal of you know um, putting a, a garnish on it or drizzling you know beautiful toppings on you know like olive oil 
oil and that sort of stuff. Um, I think that's part of it too, is you can get quite creative. And I think um, some people, are, you know, they're saying, well, I'm only cooking such a small amount of food and I only get to eat a little bit, so why bother? But it is really important to kind of be excited about what you're eating and actually be present with it. Um, yep. That's also been shown to improve your nutritional absorption as well when you're like, oh, this is going to be so great and look what I've put in here and there's a range of different foods in there. But if you're pleased with your food and the appearance of it and you're relaxed during your meal, it has been shown that you do um, absorb, you know, a bit more out of it as well. Um, I think you've raised a really good point, Jackie. What, what I see so often in clients is that they've been dieting for so many years that they're just a bit over food prep and planning and and by the time they come to surgery they're really just not um, enjoying food as much and it's lost its spark um, and they're not trying new recipes the the food mm. is 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 not as exciting as it could be and 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 we know that after surgery um, certainly after that you know seven weeks um, post-surgery and then there's often been a couple of weeks on the, a, a very low energy shake diet before surgery the palate's quite cleansed so mm. that people really don't um, look for salty things that sweets and fat receptors um, and, and the hormones have changed so that people aren't craving sweets and fatty so food actually tastes amazing mm. and and the, the, the really healthy, um, natural, vibrant flavours that you'd get in something like a Thai chicken salad or um, a, 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 a prawn and mango dish, those mm. sorts of dishes that have got the lime and the, the, a little bit of chilli if you like that sort of thing. But those really zingy sort of dishes become very appealing yeah. um, when you have a, a cleansed palate. Um, and, I, and I think that the, this is a, a really wonderful time for people to start exploring perhaps some new recipes and some new ideas because mm. one of the factors that may have contributed to, to not being able to lose weight prior to surgery sometime is that it, there's been some um, staleness in, in cooking or, or lack of cooking or you know, in menu planning um, or, or trying recipes and food just becomes something that is just there because you're hungry to fill you up. So if you can re-engage with um, a little bit of meal prep um, and some new recipes and new ideas, that's one of the key factors that leads to long-term success. I agree. And it's always looking at, you know, you've got your favourites that you cook when it's, you know, a weeknight and it's you need a quick I know this back to front kind of recipe, but I think that's a key is exploring even, you know, different kind of um, foods from different countries, even like I enjoy a lot of curries and um, I like to, you know, now I've bought this beautiful new Afghani cookbook. So I'm trying out different herbs and it's all very clean, very healthy food, but the whole um, look and feel of it and the taste of it is totally changed by, you know, the, where the, the essence of it's coming from and the herbs that they're using from different countries. So it's good to diversify that. And I think in Australia, we're so lucky. We've got a fantastic, you know, multicultural nation. So we've got access to all those different foods. I lean towards Asian a lot because I know that it's vibrant and, you know, lots of veggies and it's a quite a healthy option as well. So it's looking at, you know, those kind of um, finding your favourites, but also always exploring and looking for something new um, yeah. and finding, you know, places that you get your recipes from that you enjoy, um, that they're always updating on your behalf as well. It's always good. Yeah. <laughs> And looking at seasonal variations too. I mean, I, I, I direct a lot of my clients to the, the uh, Australian Healthy Food Guide magazine, the little mm. magazine written by dietitians, a monthly magazine that's terrific, or even the Coles and Woolworths magazines that come out in store. I mean, they're really well produced with great pictures now. and recipes, and they're all seasonal. So, um, you know, at the moment we're all into salads and, and vibrant, healthy um colorful food and then in the winter versions of those will have lovely soups and casseroles and things so yeah. if you're looking for inspiration um that they're, they're readily available those um those and they're free and they're at the checkout yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the little healthy food guide magazine is um it, it's not expensive um but it has lots of really good nutrition articles and tips actually a lot of my clients getting that as a christmas subscription as a as a gift it's a well, it's a terrific a magazine i think too also 
if you're looking for something like that each month, it keeps you engaged. Mm. Um, you know that each month there'll be something coming out with some new ideas. It'll be relative to the season. And uh, it, it, it just gives you a little bit of it, you know, something to look forward to as far as a few new ideas each month. So that's, that's something that can be consistent as well. Yeah, it's keeping it all top of mind, I think. I talk about that a lot in our group and in the podcast. It's like having those range of places you go to, you know, different groups or Facebook or, you know, a magazine subscription or the Healthy Food Guide. It's like these different um, areas that you go to to get this regular input and there's always something to learn about nutrition, um, but also just new ideas and, and that sort of stuff. So really keeping it in your space so you'll keep on making those choices I think is important. Um, yep. So we'll have a look at the puree stage at Christmas time. They're a little bit less restricted. Um, there's talk of pureeing a roast meal and that's not hard to do, put a bit of gravy on it. What are your thoughts on Christmas on purees? Yeah, I think the, the key to the puree diet, I always say, is basing around two key principles, planned and prep, so that you've got some, a var- and, and the second one is variety. Mm. Um, you know, I have <laughs> clients that have a week two and they've had the same chicken casserole because they've only cooked one dish and then no wonder they're sick of it so it's totally about making it three or four different dishes and freezing them up and often get clients to freeze things up in the little containers you guys have got plenty of those on your on your site Mm -hmm. um and just um give yourself a range of flavors so you're not eating the same thing day in day out and then the other thing is there there is no restriction about chili and there is no restriction about curries. And as long as you haven't got reflux or esophagitis, um, that's really problematic. Things taste better if they're, if they're overly seasoned and spiced in the puree phase. If it's bland, it's really not going to do much for you. So be a little bit adventurous um, with your tastes and flavours and you'll make that puree phase oh, oh so much easier. Yeah, that's a good point. Because you're stuck with the same texture for each meal, I suppose mm-hmm. the flavour variation really would be something that you're looking, you know, you're, you're honed your senses on as well. Yeah. Um, so coming up with different ideas for that. We were talking about um, in our blog, I'm just kind of running through that, the puree stage, you know, looking at making sure it's a balanced meal still with your protein and, you know, veggies and that sort of thing. Um, there's no reason unless you've had trouble with like meats and, um, you know, other foods that aren't sitting well that you can't just choose from what's on offer wisely um, and get your stick out and blend it up and enjoy. Um, dress it up a little bit as well. One thing on that I wanted to discuss is the differences in, you know, some people are very outward about the fact they've had weight loss surgery and they're, you know, everybody knows about it. How do others who are not so public well, how do they navigate a time like this where everybody's, you know, it is about the food um, in a lot of households. Um, it's a tricky one if you don't want to be sort of, I'm eating puree for Christmas. Mm. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, it really depends on, on the client. I, I do talk to them about that. And and some people go, I couldn't care less. This is the start of my journey. I'm really excited. This is what yeah. I'm doing. Um, most people are too worried about what they're eating, what they're doing to worry about what I'm having. So this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, and so I really admire that sort of resolve that just says, well, this is me. This is what I'm having. Um, so be it. Um, it, it, it. It does get tricky for those who are not wanting to draw attention to themselves or might be with a group that they're not that familiar with um, and the questions arise um, and that's just about deciding what you want to say sometimes I have said to clients you know if underplication or a hernia repair has the same workup um, going through the various phases if you're not comfortable sharing that you've had surgery but you need to explain something you could just say that you've had um, and and, and and a lot of people do actually have a, a, a small stitch, a small hernia repair at time of surgery. So if you are someone who's had a small stitch put in, then you, you've got every right to say, look, I've just had a small hernia repair. Um, and this is the, the workup. You don't have mm. to mention your weight. And that that's a, a lot of people actually find that that's a good way out. That's really um, or good. Or just saying, I've just had upper upper abdominal surgery. Mm. Um, and um, and I'm, I'm just working through um, this diet for the next couple of weeks while it settles down. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to mention the word bariatric surgery. Yeah, yeah. 
And I think sometimes when you do mention that word, it's, you know, a lot of people don't know what it is. So if you don't yeah. want further questioning, that's a way to get around it. That's a really good solution, I think. Mm. Um, and some people just say I'm working through something with my doctor and yeah. this is what they've recommended for me at this point. So then yeah. there's, you know, there's nothing that there's, it's just a safe, you know, barrier yeah. that you've put there. I think it's also, and, and it's also key in the whole journey is learning that you really don't have to explain yourself to everybody. Mm -hmm. and you know feel obligated to give the whole story um i think that's important and it's at a time like this where you know if you're not drinking at christmas time or you, you know, people are either like you're pregnant or what's wrong with you or particularly in australia where we've got such a drinking culture and a lot of people are uncomfortable about it when you're not drinking and they are so they make it that their discomfort around you is projected back to you. Absolutely. So yep. that's a really, like, and people are like, you, if I go somewhere and I'm not drinking, you can, can be guaranteed that someone will offer me four times. Are mm. you sure? Are you sure? And mm. it's the same with food. No, thanks. I don't want any more. Are you sure? It's like, yeah, I am. <laughs> so mm. it's, it's also Sometimes about, that's where, yeah, depending on, on, I mean, the situation, sometimes um, if I'm just talking to a, a non-bariatric client, just someone trying to, lose weight I would usually never get them to explain the reason why they're making different choices is about mm. weight because unfortunately most people don't appreciate the 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 seriousness of someone's weight loss attempt and and often well-meaning people will go on oh, go on it won't matter let's just oh, yeah. you know not not intentionally trying to sabotage but just trying to allow that person to join in and, and that mm. can get a bit tricky so it is good to use a, a, a medical or a non-weight um, explanation of some sort and people then tend to respect that a little bit more mm. that's a good um, point yeah rather than um talking about weight if you're not comfortable talking about it or if you're in a group of people that you might know are a bit raucous or mm. um, that you're not comfortable explaining that you've had surgery to sometimes it's easier to use something medical but, but yeah. it's really individual Jackie isn't it yeah it is it absolutely is and it um yeah it depends on kind of where you're at and who you're with because it could be that you're with family and you can be quite open with it but if it's family and two other people that you don't know very well it's mm. not going to be the same conversation obviously so it mm. depends on kind of where you are and who's there mm, absolutely. Um, I was also going to say in the puree phase if you're trying new foods for the first time that you didn't try obviously in the um, liquids phase just to take it easy and um you know wait for the and wait for the effects or maybe not try too many new things on a day when you're socializing in case something does go wrong and you you know you do get upset or you're feeling uncomfortable or you're even going to dumping um it's like going with a safe bet perhaps is probably a, a good option on those kind of days yeah, um, with with any phase going from soft to full particularly mm. um you know where you wouldn't just grab a prawn and eat the end which is how prawns are often served these days on a platter pick up a prawn and think you're going to chew it well because your bite size is usually too big yeah. um so that that transition soft to full is probably the the, the one time people need to be particularly cautious um, of, of how they're going about that because in, in a social situation too you can't always use cut things up particularly mm. if you're standing around having hors d'oeuvres um, you can't always cut things up and eat them with your little tiny fork like you do as well so that would be an, another time to be cautious yeah and that's yeah good point is just when you're trying new things or doing or changing stages as well um, I was going to say other ways of focusing on you know the social aspect and taking the focus off the food is um, also being aware that if you are going to visit someone else's place and you don't necessarily have much control over what's going to be there um, and you know you want to eat a particular food, um, take it along with you, offer to bring a plate and make sure it's something that's really suitable for you. Yep. And then, you know, you, you're obviously offering your generosity, but you're also looking after yourself as well. And, you know, other people can share in what you, you know, if you're on solid um, foods, um, other people are welcome to share in it, but at least you know that you're not turning up somewhere and there's only, you know, potato chips and stuff that you don't want to engage in if you turn up unprepared generally you know most of the time you'll find something that's suitable but to guarantee that you're not going to 
find that it's a problem, it's good to take something that you'll enjoy um, and that you can share as well. So it's all about preparation again. Yeah, I think the other key thing to think about too is timing. If you're if you're going to someone's house for dinner, you may not be eating until 7.30 or later. Mm. Um, and when we look at refueling, um, you're probably well past your, your usual time that you really do need to refuel or eat something. So mm. it's pretty important to um, perhaps eat something before you go as well. Um, and again, um, no matter what stage you're up to, um, if you go too long without eating, then there is a tendency to become overly hungry and eat too quickly. And that can be a recipe for disaster as well. So yeah. often encourage clients to, to think about having a certainly with 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 anyone but certainly with bariatric clients don't eat lightly during the day thinking you're going to go out at night you absolutely need to keep refueling mm. lunch afternoon tea and probably something at your usual dinner time yeah um so that by the time you actually eat you're not you're not healing over too hungry lack of fuel or too hungry yeah good point and also like i do hear of people who are saying well i'm going out for dinner tonight so i'll skip one mm. meal and have more later and we talk about not kind of banking calories because mm. of that quite often if you're you know dying for food and your blood glucose has dropped so low you're also not feeling very great but um, it's a tendency to make poor choices as well if you're letting it go on too long yep um, I was also going to talk about alcohol at this time of year. Mm. And um, the recommendation is, I do hear differing recommendations. It's, you know, the first year after surgery, if you can, it's good to keep it off the table um, for, for varying reasons. But one of them is weight loss um, and good health. What do, you, what do you normally set up as guidelines around alcohol for your patients? Yeah, I really like people not to have anything in the first three or four months regardless. Mm. Um, I have clients are always asking about Christmas Day. Um, and so, you know, that's my recommendation. If you can do without it, well done. Um, if you desperately need to have something, um, try not to have anything bubbly or fizzy. And it would just be a small amount. And you know what? Most clients have a mouthful and go, oh, it just tastes terrible anyway. Mm. So if you've been off alcohol that long, it's... It, it's highly likely it's not going to be appealing for you and it really isn't going to taste terrific. So be aware that um, that may well happen. You know, sometimes I, I've said a couple of times to clients, it's like when your children pick up your glass of wine and go, oh, this tastes terrible. Why do you adults even drink this stuff? That's often how it feels when you start to have a glass of wine again about surgery, but, uh, sorry, after surgery, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. But I, I'd really like nothing in the first three to four months, ideally six. The longer you can stay off it, the better, mm. because it is one of those old habits that can come creeping back. Yeah. Um, and I think if, you, if you're looking at what your old habits are and you are someone who used alcohol um, for various reasons and you were drinking more than perhaps was ideal, um, it's definitely one of those habits to try to um, look at modifying, as you talked about before, Jackie, behaviour change. Yeah. So, um, you know, you come home and you, you you used to have a glass of wine, well, maybe now that's the time you go for a walk or you yeah. water the garden or you don't have alcohol in the house during the week. Yeah. Um, or you don't. And then that's about getting whoever you live with or your partner on board with that as well. So, you know, we, we know that bariatric surgery gives you that window, two or three year window of opportunity to really look at modifying those habits and behaviours that were responsible for the weight gain. And, mm. and so in that time, if you can look at modifying your alcohol behaviours, particularly in that first six months where you just really don't often have a taste for it and set yourself up some more, some, some healthier, more sustainable habits, Christmas should really just fit into that overall picture. Yeah. And I, that's another thing we covered in our blog was look at it's not, is it a Christmas month or is it a Christmas day? Do you know Absolutely, what I mean? Like yes. you can really lose the plot and go, well, here comes December and the parties have started and whoop, that's it for me. I'll come back yep. in January. Or yes. you can just weave it in. It's actually just a couple of days really, isn't it? Um, so you can, you know, 
catch up with friends and, and I can really feel it this week, particularly everyone's trying to catch up and squeeze a few things in before Christmas and, you know, we've got our work Christmas party and that sort of thing. So I'm aware there's like four opportunities for it to get out of hand in one week, which is quite unusual. And it's looking at well, what are my desired outcomes and how will I navigate this? We talked about also like um, days where you have maybe two events and how you manage those. And it's looking at, you know, assigning one meal where you can have that glass of wine and you know have some extra treats but use one of those events as just a normal everyday meal and a chance to socialize so it doesn't have to be a party everywhere you go um and you know you, you probably come out of christmas feeling pretty amazing actually well and i think <laughs> yeah, exactly the other key is just like we talked about the food once you've um experienced quite a few social functions without alcohol you mm -hmm. actually realize that you don't need it to be yeah. or need to be reliant on it to have fun and I think yeah. that's a that's a I get a lot of those comments from clients as well they're actually managing quite well in those situations without having alcohol and, yes. and the longer they stay off it the less likely they they feel that they need to have it in a situation like that anyway so that's yeah. that's that often um Get that feedback so I really try to encourage people to to stay off it as long as they can be the driver you know mm. set yourself up for success as best as you can yeah that's a good point um I'm always the driver um <laughs> and I you know it's like enjoy it but and then dip out of it as well yes. and yep. also looking at this time of year where we are winding things back and people are you know we don't have kids at school that we have to rush off and you know do their lunches and all that sort of stuff for so is there more time for exercise rather than less um, it's looking at that as well I find I'm generally my fittest at this time of year because I have less responsibilities outside of everything else mm. so there's a bit more flexibility with work and there's you know some days off and that sort of stuff and you really really can um, have your cake and eat it too. You can go and, you know, do what you want to do, ramp up your exercise a little bit because you've got some time to rest and, you know, recover and then go and, you know, enjoy yourself within reason. So it does stay balanced that way. Whereas I think we can very easily go, well, here comes December. I'll just close down the gym membership. I'll, you know, I'm not going back to that until January and everything seems to kind of grind to a halt. Whereas you can actually leverage this time um, for your benefit and really set up some good habits, but also, um, you know, come out of it feeling really good. That's exactly right. That sort of swings to another point that I was going to make about continuing to feel engaged. Um, mm. And exercise, I think, is one of the key things that, or one of the key factors that helps you feel engaged in this journey to good health. So if you're eating a little bit differently, um, and there's a few things that you, you may not used to be used to having and you're starting to feel a bit sluggish and you drop your exercise off as well, it can make you feel a bit disengaged and it can mm. make you feel a bit despondent. So, and that, that then is one of the factors that can lead to that, oh, my goodness, I've blown it now. Where am I going? It's all too hard. Um, but if you keep your exercise going at that time, I call it how, keeping your finger in the pie. You're still feeling as if you're on the journey. You're still working towards it. And it does definitely help you maintain weight, of course, mm. but it also helps you feel engaged um, yeah. and it helps you feel as if you are still actually actively involved um, and helping yourself. Yeah, good point. The other thing that comes out of exercise is dopamine. So if you've got mm. that on board, you're not going to want the sweet stuff that's giving you the dopamine. So you balance yourself out without too much effort really um, yep. and feel good for the rest of the day one thing I was going to say is still start the day with your your usual breakfast um, even on Christmas day I tend to have kind of the same breakfast I normally would and then we kind of go off into the day that will also set you up if you're having a really good solid protein based breakfast in the morning any day of the year um, you'll always find that um, you tend to have less of that kind of um, craving and the need for you know those carbs and the sugars because you've boosted your you've leveled out your blood glucose levels in the start of the day I saw research on that and said that people are having that solid protein breakfast can eat up to 80 percent less calories fewer calories um, yeah. throughout the day they did a it was a really interesting study actually so that's really something to think about um, during these times as well um, but also I was going to say that you know if you do have a few events on in one day, I think people get really um, 
the bit hung up on, you know, telling a host that they don't want their food. Like if you're on your second, if you've been out for brunch and then you're turning up for a mid-afternoon kind of evening event and you've been kind of grazing all day, this time of year I think it's really okay to say, no, I'm I'm here for the company, um, but, yeah, please don't cater for me because I've got another event beforehand. So you can set it up so that people aren't expecting you to turn up and eat, you know, everything that's on the table by saying yeah. we've got something on before beforehand please don't cater for us you know um, we'll pick but we won't necessarily need yeah, that's a, a that's lot a, of food. I really like that I think that's a great point because then you're not if you set it up you set the scene then you're not putting mm. yourself in an awkward and then and then they don't have to have that conversation as yeah. well that that's a really good point Jackie yeah. yeah I think it's not then you know this time of year a host is not offended like it's not like mm. they've booked you in for dinner on you know a weeknight mm. on a, a normal week where that you turn up and go no thanks I don't want your food but I think we also need to get better at like we talk about advocating for ourselves and that's a, an opportunity for that is yeah I've done my dash at lunch today I had wine and I had the dessert so I'm not doing that again um at dinner time so just don't cater um yeah, I find, and I find you'll you'll resonate with people who are making those choices too. It's not um, as foreign as it used to be. A lot of people are taking health and wellness, whether it's weight loss surgery or just overall. Everyone seems to be um, picking up on the fact that we do need to, you know, moderate what we're eating and make a better effort at looking after our health. And I think this year has pointed that out as well. I think there's a lot of, you know, people who are looking at how can I do better for myself so my health is in good check, um, and I'm you know protecting myself in other ways as well so it's um it's not a foreign um concept anymore and i think it taking the you know the idea out of it that everybody's watching you wondering what you're doing they're they are so busy worrying about themselves i think That's nobody right. really notices so um it's something to remember yeah that's often the case I think. yeah <laughs> And I was going to ask the group if there's any questions, please pop them in the chat box there. We'll start to wrap things up. So if you, you know, you've got something that you're up against or you want some help from Sally or myself to navigate a particular situation, just let us know. Um, we did do a um, newsletter this week with a great blog on navigating Christmas, which is also on our website under blogs, which you'll, you'll find it there. And then the next blog that comes out, I think at the end of next week is all about um, new year, getting ready um, for, you know, and I don't like to say January one and a whole new everything, but it's, it does punk, it is punctuated and it's punctuated by the end of the Christmas season. I think everyone's had enough and they're ready to kind of um, regain their routine at least. Um, and I don't like to say, you know, look at it as another 365 days in front of you, like take it in bite-sized chunks. But that's kind of where we're going with the content for the next couple of weeks to help you get through um, and set yourself up to win next year as well. Yeah, I think that New Year time is a really great time to just go back to, to what your old habits were before surgery. Hmm. Um, and just perhaps have a revise and say, well, yep, how am I going with those, depending again on how far out past surgery you are. But just having a look at, at, at um, how you're working with those. Are you, are you finding some solutions? Have you made some behaviour change? And, um, and that can be a, a way to help you set your goals. Hmm. Um, you might have ticked a few off. You might be exercising. You might be meal prepping. But you might still have a problem with, after dinner snacking or you might still have a problem with not enough variety in what you're eating so um that's the key to to where you're going is looking at which which are the old habits that aren't quite modified as yet that's great goal setting like a lot of people come to the start of the year and they're like well I want to lose x kilos and I want to exercise more but they're not those smart goals are they and what you've just mentioned is more of a definitive you know I used to do this I'm not doing this anymore but I'd really like to tweak this part so you're really taking stock and you're not just randomly putting something out you know that's not definitive and you know doesn't resonate with you or doesn't even you know um, relate so it's it is a great way like looking back to look forward I think that's quite important as well a bit of journaling as well um, and that's what this time of year is I think 
I don't know if, if I'm speaking for myself, but I think half of Australia cull their houses and clean everything out and kind of do, it is a period of, you know, letting go of things and resetting. Um, so it is, you know, you start, you do start the year fresh, um, but I think we really need to be careful about, you know, this year's the year because, you know, this week could be the week and today is the day. It's, you know, it's also taking the focus off January a little bit um, and taking bite-sized pieces of, you know, setting new goals and making changes. I spoke with Cal um, Patterson during the year about, he, we did a podcast and a webinar on um, navigating COVID when everybody was locked down. And he was talking about how our brains are just these associating machines. So he said, if you get in the car and the first thing you want is something to eat, it's because you've paired getting in the car with having something to eat or sitting on the lounge and needing a biscuit. And you've just coupled those two activities. And if you can inter interrupt that um, for process with either doing something else or, you know, engaging in something else, you actually uncouple those um, negative behaviours and you repair that, you know, sitting on the lounge with something that's a bit more positive takes a couple of weeks but that's all it is and if you can just um, have a look at what you'd like to get rid of as far as a habit goes and just look at it as what have I paired this activity with and what can I repair it with so you know you might sit on the couch and want a you know hot drink of Milo with sugar in it um, you might want <laughs> you know you might replace that with something else that's you know less um impactful as far as you know the sugar content and the calories go and just you know repeat it and set that up so you'd remove the milo so you don't have access to it and bring something in that is you know relatively um exciting um but you know not not as and a better health choice and then just repeat that so the brain goes oh okay when i sit here i have this instead mm. of that so it's yep. all of these it's just tiny little things um you know atomic habits has anyone read that book <laughs> just got atomic habits it's oh my, my christmas God. reading it's just really? arrived in the mail Ah, oh, I've read it three times. I listened yeah. to it. It's just the most incredible way of just tiny little things you can do yeah. that will change your life. I think it's fantastic. So I hope you enjoy it. I, I, yeah, I can't wait. I think with the habits too, I was reading something um, on the weekend about establishing a habit and something like exercise. So what what the, the studies show that if you can do it four days in a row mm. um, and then never miss two days in a row so four days in a row will set that habit up and yeah. then if you don't miss two days in a row then you're likely to maintain the habit if you miss two days in a row you have to go back to the start and do four days in a row again That's so if great. you can yeah if you can work on that four to um a time frame so um then it really helps you because you've got a bit of a game plan to work to and the science will show that that's how that habit gets cemented um and we know with walking if you're going every day you feel sensational if you mm. miss a day so be it but if you miss two days it actually that's, is yeah. harder to get going again so you're right with all those habits sitting down at night um watching the tv if you swap it out your your milo for a cup of tea or something and you 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 do it regularly, you, you actually do get used to that new habit. And I, and I guess Christmas time is a really um, easy time to derail those habits. So if you can work on that for two, never miss mm. two days in a row or don't maintain an um, a, 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 a unhealthy habit or a new habit that's not so fabulous so it, for two days in a row, then the chances of it be of you being able to get back on track are much greater. I love that. Thank you. That's so easy to implement and makes so much sense. Yeah, simple. And you can actually see how it plays out. Like last yeah. week I missed one walk. The next day I did a shorter walk and the next day I went, I think I'm over the walking. And then the next day I did my usual one. I'm like, yeah, I'm back on track. So yeah. it's fascinating how we work, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, thank you. That's wonderful. Yeah. And do you have any parting pearls of wisdom for us, Sally, about this time of year and... I just I think if I can um, track back to, to, to what we talked about in, in the opening statements, I think it's really important that you don't feel worried or concerned or mm. frightened or that you're going to break something or how am I going to do this? I think it's really important that you trust the process. Yeah. You've had surgery. Um, you've got a tool. Um, most people are still volume restricted. Um, you, you know, you may or may not crave foods as much as you did 
Um, so just go with the flow and in, enjoy it um, and, and, and allow yourself to eat mindfully. Don't eat with guilt um, and, and join in. And on the flip side of that, I mean, one of the things that helps maintain that is that if you don't have a house full of goodies too, so that's the, the over-catering that we all do, um, just be mindful and, and, and we can bring in the fact that Christmas is about everyone getting together with family and friends and let's get to the essence of that rather than the essence of the food. Yeah. So try, you know, Christmas Day is one day, Boxing Day you should have finished off all those food items that you've bought in. So if you're not over catering, then you're not faced with that challenge for the next couple of weeks as well. Yeah, that's a good point. I send it home with other people. Here, I'm sure you like this. <laughs> um, and that way it's not left in the house. That's my thing is if it's left over, it's it's human nature, I think, in a lot we of ways. We don't like waste, so no. that's where it comes from. So yeah. I think if you can... Be mindful that Christmas goes for Christmas Day and Boxing Day. Join in. Don't buy the 24-pack of minced pies. Go to – I always try to encourage my clients that you're having such small quanti um, quantities. Make it the best quality you possibly can. Yes. Um, so spend a little bit more on one or two really delicious ones than the, the, the six or the 24-pack from Coles, which don't taste that terrific anyway. Yeah, absolutely right. And that's the other thing is now that there's not much room, go for top quality and explore that, you know, don't be shy to, you know, spend a bit more on the food that you are eating because there's, you know, you're eating less of it. Make it quality and have a look at, you know, different, um, you know, gourmet grocers and that sort of thing and just find different you know, um, healthy options that really float your boat because there's plenty of them around now. I think we're doing really well with um, keeping like whole foods on the table, but also keeping it interesting and tasty. There's And once you set that habit and once you've changed your palate, which only takes about three weeks, they say, to renew that kind of taste bud sensation, it's amazing what you'll find excitement in. Um, you were talking about it before, like the beautiful colours and isn't that a magical pore pore? Look how perfect nature's made it and it's just a beautiful colour and there's just different excitement, I think, um, in different foods than there was before and I think it's really kind of harnessing that as well and introducing that to your children. I think that's gold, like that's where it starts is um, you know, relishing food, good food and getting excited about it um, rather than, no, I can't have that, I can't have that, um, not so much of the restriction, I think, as well, um, coming out of that mindset. So, yeah, good um, yeah, good feedback. I just had one little comment in the chat here. I heard something tonight I never knew. Do our restrictions stop after two to three years? I had bypassed 12 months ago. Um, what are your thoughts, Sally? Yes, well, yes, they do. It's very individual, but mm. we do know that around the two or three year mark, so the mechanisms of action of, of bariatric surgery, be it a, a, a lap band or a sleeve or a bypass, are really, in a nutshell, two mechanisms. One, a mm. volume restriction, and two, the hormonal changes. And those hormonal changes help regulate appetite and hunger and satiety. Um, they do start to decrease at around about two or three years. And again, it's a completely individual. Some people at five or seven, I saw a woman who came back for after five years and she's still volume restricted. We did mm. actually, a, we did a CT fizz. We did it. We checked her volume of her stomach after her sleeve and she was still volume restricted at seven years. So don't, panic it doesn't mean that it's all going to go away and you're going to go back to eating normal sized portions but volumes will go up a little bit mm. and hormonal restrictions tend to dull yes. um, and that's just the way it is um, that's why we say we need to look at that two or three year period as that window of opportunity to reset your habits and behaviors yeah. um, it's extreme as I've just pointed out it's very individual um, you may find that that these things stay with you um, and that's sensational, but most people find they start to reduce a little bit. Yeah, and I think that's exactly it. It's this honeymoon period where you're not feeling all of those things, that insatiable hunger and the cravings and that sort of thing is to really get those habits set up, use yeah. your portion plate and bowl and make sure you're really aware of a bariatric portion because that's kind of where it's at is a lot of people two years down the track will say, oh, my God, I can eat so much more now. And I'll always say, well, yes, you can, but should you? 
like you need to go back and revisit what a portion is and it's very easy everywhere you go the portions in Australia are huge and in other countries they're even bigger so it's looking at what our normal used to be and you know sticking with what a serving is for a bariatric patient and, and working within those guidelines. And even, Jackie, as volumes do start to increase, if if they do need a little bit more, it's using the vegetables and salad group to because that's because what we need to add in is more fibre. So it's those high fibre foods that will provide that fullness and satiety without adding too many extra calories. Mm -hmm. So as volumes increase a bit, that's the group that we really want to bulk up on. Mm -hmm. Um, If 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 you can't if 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 your volumes have gone up a little bit, but I I, 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 what you say is so true. It is about understanding you know what what is it that you require and and when we talk about it we would look at are you eating regularly or have you gone back to old patterns of not eating enough during the day then wanting to eat a big meal at night so just revisiting all those core principles Mm. of 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 healthy healthy habits really yeah the other thing I was going to say with that is that you can be tricked into thinking hunger has returned if you're not eating enough protein and putting Mm. your carbs in first that's the quickest thing like usually when someone says I'm craving again or I'm hungry I'm like flip your food around again because that's the first thing that will change as well is that getting protein on the go is pretty hard so you have to be prepared and if that kind of slips you know one or two years down the track and you start to flip your meals around and have those more refined carbs first even and less protein you will find your craving and you're more hungry so that's kind of the first thing I'll do is say are you really sticking with that you know the portions of protein that you need and looking at those healthy carbs have those refined carbs slipped back in because they'll be peaking and troughing blood glucose and insulin and that will send you on this crazy hungry escapade um, so the first thing I do if I've been off you know maybe over Christmas and I've had a bit more alcohol than I normally have or more carbs the first thing I'll do to kind of quell that um, role that you can get on is to increase protein again and um, and even a little bit of fat just to dull that um, hunger and the, you know, I need a quick fix right now. So just to level it all out again, it's a good place to start. They talked about that in one of our road shows this year, that that's the key is like 12, 12 months after surgery, that protein level has dropped a bit and it's really important to remind patients to keep that um, going in at every meal and snack really. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's protein's the key. And Sally, go back and listen to Sally's um, podcast that we did earlier in the year. They're all housed on the AWLS podcast website. Um, and we talked at length about protein and the requirements after weight loss surgery and that sort of stuff. It was really informative and um, worth, a, worth a listen. So I think that's all the questions we've had. And I'll wrap up for the evening. Next month we'll be back. We'll advertise... Um, We'll probably be talking about new year and resolutions and that sort of thing, I would imagine. Um, It's in the plan. And so I wish you all, and thank you for, you know, giving up your time and um, everyone who's here. Um, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and have some fun and take some time out to relax and make some memories, I think is the key, is um, taking it all in, maybe take a lot of photographs and make a beautiful album out of it. And that's kind of another thing to do with, you know, spare time where you wouldn't be cooking and doing all that sort of stuff. So I think there's um, there's a lot. Um, it frees us up a lot when we're not thinking about food all the time. <laughs> It, absolutely it certainly yeah. does it, yeah, it's it a time saver yeah. <laughs> get a good book read the atomic habits book and yeah. we'll all convene in january and talk about what we're doing <laughs> I, I, i'm looking forward to the reading that book. Oh, it's a great book yeah thank you all right we'll have a wonderful wonderful break and um we'll catch you all next year thanks, bye everyone thank thanks, you Jackie. take care everyone thank you bye